Hi guys, welcome to episode 2 of my Planet Coaster series. In today's episode, we're going to be finishing off the theme of our gondola station near the entrance of the park. We're also going to be adding something else, so you have to wait and see what that is. Hopefully in the next episode, we'll be adding an extra building to the left of the entrance from the view of someone walking in the park. And that building should be some facilities including toilets, an information booth and maybe a food facility or two. As you can see, we're just finishing off the functionality of the gondola station, gondola station, sorry, adding in things like paths and making it accessible from the main path entrance. I just want to answer something that's been on my mind since the last episode, because I have sorted a glitch that was happening in my editing software. So now, when you're watching this, the video should be a higher quality than the last one, and I hope it works better and looks better from your device. Also, I'm just going to explain a bit about what's going to happen in the actual island of the park. We will be beginning the park hopefully in episode 4. I'll be adding a coaster and some other buildings to the area, and maybe a flat ride. This could possibly take two episodes like the entrance area has done, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Possibly in the next episode, when we build the building at the entrance, we could improve the pathway leading from the entrance to the main island. Also, we could make the bridge from the edge of the island to the entrance look a bit nicer. Also, just as you can see here, I'm adding some more elements to the gondola station, which I'll be duplicating on the other station on the island. I'll leave you with some theme park music from Trips Drill, and I'll see you in a bit. Bye. As you can see here, I'm just starting to implement some elements from the first gondola station onto the second gondola station that's on the main island. I'll be doing the same for most of the lighting and vegetation, but the vegetation will probably have to wait until a future episode where I've started to do a lot of more theming on the actual island itself, as I will not be doing a lot of theming on there yet because I might not know where the paths are going to go and I don't really want a lot of floor showing. So I have to wait until the paths get put in for me to actually know where to put the theming. Okay, see you in a bit. Also here as you can see um, I start to think about the lighting side of things and I thought I could use these pillars that I made at the start as sort of like a, well, a pillar really for the lights to go across from one to the other. See later on I look at this at night and I think mm, it doesn't look quite right so I try and raise it up 
but when it's raised up it just doesn't look natural and when it's at this point it covers the windows so actually in the future what I do is I just remove it completely and I don't have them I just have them above the passageways you'll have to see that later though but it's also just like that for Planet Coaster you might spend ages making something and then you think ah, it actually doesn't just look right so I think I'll just get rid of it you can't have to stick to things all the time you have to get you have to learn to get rid of some things as not all of them will work and even though you might have spent ages on it and then you just think oh it just doesn't look right you just have to get rid of it it's the most natural thing for any planet coaster player to do really You can see now I've changed it to uh, night mode, a permanent night mode, not just a temporary one. Um, and so I can start to think about the lighting side of things around the station. And I play around with a lot of the different lighting things around the game with the added DLC packs as well. I ended up actually going for these things called the Spooky Lanterns, which are out of the, um, I believe it's the Vintage Pack? I think so. Um, anyway, yeah, I use them because you don't have to use it just because it says, oh, uh, Spooky or something like that. It could say, like, oh, Western, and you could use it in this. That Sky Rail Co sign that you can see, that was a Western sign, and I just used it here because it just looked good and it fit really well onto the porch sort of thing. So, yeah, you don't have to use it just because it says it. You have to become creative with your ideas and stuff like that. Also, what I did here with these lights is those um, spooky lanterns and the string lights that I've got in the building sort of gave a, like a white sort of glow. But then the storm lanterns, sorry, not the storm lanterns, the just the normal lanterns I had on top, gave off a yellow glow on the corners of the buildings and I thought it looked weird so what I did was I set them onto a trigger so they weren't emitting any light but it still looked like they were so it wasn't giving off any yellow light except I did keep storm lanterns above the actual bit where the gondola goes in and out from just because I thought it looked good from a gondola view.
at this point I've moved away from theming the actual station itself to theming the area around it. This includes um, bushes, flowers, sorts of vegetation, stuff like that, rocks, which you'll definitely see a lot of in this park, in the park in general as well. Um, just bits and bobs that just I thought kind of just fit in, like these flowers I'm just putting in now. I well, actually get rid of them, but I implement other flowers into the area that don't really like go in sort of alpine theme. It's a very loosely themed area. Also, you might be wondering why I went for an alpine theme. It was because where the park is located in the game is in like a, a high mountain sort of rocky area. So I thought it just fit in well with the like surrounding mountains that tower over the area. You might be able to see in the screenshot that's at the end of the video the uh, mountains, but uh, I don't know. And here, what I'm doing with the trees is what you can do is they have these pre selected trees that you can use, and if you hold down shift, it moves them down into the ground so you can make them any height you want. And that's why I've used that trick there for the area because you don't want these huge towering trees that you just stand underneath and they like you look up to them you kind of want them at the right height level otherwise it ruins the area for people visiting and just looking around at like the mountains and stuff so it works a lot better if you uh, have the right sight levels and a little trick is if you press the um, T on the keyboard it changes the camera mode from a sort of surrounding one to a third person one a first person one sorry actually and so if you can it allows you to go down to guest level so you can view the park from guest level and see what it actually looks like because that's the most important thing is what they can see not what you can see customers are always right i guess Also in the park I'm thinking about implementing a dark ride, I haven't tried that yet so I think it would be a great first try. I might implement it in the second area, not the first area, so that I know that the first area is going to look great. Because I'm not so sure how I would theme the uh, huge building for the dark ride. i would probably try and make it a smaller dark ride than one of the big ones, but I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. Here you can see with these rocks, these rocks, not these rocks, uh, I've actually pushed them down so far into the ground, but they just stick out a tiny bit so it looks like it's made out of rocks, and then in a bit you'll see I put some plants on top of the area. Um, this is just so you're not staring at some bare ground when you're in the exit queue or in your gondola, because it makes the ride seem a lot less like immersive in where you are and it really helps bring the area together, which you'll see at the end of the video. It also allows character to the ride and its own special, unique personality, which is great for any ride, and a, even a transport ride like it itself. Here you can see I'm starting to work on the secret theming thing that I was thinking about putting over here. It was just mostly just to fill in the space because I didn't want a bland wall there that wouldn't serve some sort of functionality. 
even if it doesn't really function, it's just something to look at. Like I could put a vista point there, which is this um, sort of pillar thing that you put in for guests to use, and they just stand there and look at something. And it also does attract a lot of guests, so I think I might implement that into the park. But what the actual theming structure is, you're about to see, is... No, it's not that. It's a fountain. Because I thought it just looked so nice with the sort of alpine, rocky theme of the area. And it's going to have the whole wall around there. It's going to be surrounded by rocks and colourful flowers and bushes. And I thought it looks really good by the end of it. You just have to wait and see. Also, how are you liking this music in the video? Uh, it took me a while to find the one for the first video. But uh, I hope you enjoy them. And any suggestions for music for the background, uh, post them in the comments and I'll have a look. Now you can see I'm in the uh, effect station part of the uh, planet coaster and I'm just finding the right effect to add to the top of the waterfall. It just makes it look a lot more dramatic and add things to it and add more character, like I said, with the ride. You don't have to have every part of the um, actual park being a functional thing that guests can use because having stuff like this just makes the park seem a lot more relaxed and nice to look at rather than loads of rides just bunched in one area. Also, just to go into a bit more detail, the next episode, I think I should be adding a bit more to the park entrance, this bit here with the, just the gates. And I'm going to definitely be adding a building with uh, functional properties. Um, and some bits like toilets, restaurants, not restaurants, but the um, like takeaway boxes that you can get in Planet Coaster that guests can access so they don't get hungry or thirsty. Um, and also some uh, theming just that, to fit it in with the area that it's already encased in before you take this adventure across the bridge and into the main island. I just wanted this area to feel really nice and welcoming to people just entering the park. There's nothing too that dramatic going on, just the waterfall and bits like that. Also here I'm just adding um, a little uh, thing that just covers the ticket booths, I think they're called, or they're called park entrances. Um, just because they're quite ugly metal can pillars or something that just stick out the ground. So what I'm going to do here is, you'll see in a moment, I just put these logs down, I push them so they're perfectly uh, just covering it, and then I move them down so they... Uh, make sure they completely uh, just up guest height level, like the perfect level for the guests entering the park. Also, in a bit, I add some lights to it. I'm not quite sure where I have the sign for the park. I think I might have it at the end of the bridge where you just get onto the island. Like a big sign there saying um, the name of the park. 
Wanakan Park. I think that's what I'm going to be calling it for now, the temporary name. I need to change it on the um, uh, actual name on Planet Coaster, but you should see that in the next episode change. If you don't, then you know I've forgotten it, but you should see that change before the next episode. And yeah, I'll leave you to listen to some more theme park music from Trips Drill. It looks like we're coming to the end of the episode. So I'll see you in episode three for the final finishings of the entrance area. Bye.